another story um, that's circulating today. Fabrizio Romano has revealed that there's been no progression at Bayern Munich when it comes to Musiala's new deal, which has led to a number of teams in the Premier League. Chelsea, Liverpool are two of them. But namely, Arsenal and Manchester City, they said, are now on a sort of red alert, if you like. Obviously, they want the player. They're looking at him. And they're looking to both pounce should Musiala not sign a new deal with Bayern Munich, as an example. We know how good he is. First question I would say to you is, how good an addition would he be to the Premier League, in your opinion? Yeah, he's, he's definitely a very exciting young player. I love the way he gets the ball, carries it, drives at people. Good skill, good technical ability. I think he's different from anything we've got in the Prem. Um, I think he'd be a really welcome addition. And I, I think we've started to see that a lot of the top players aren't coming in. Um, so I would like to see um, some more of the, the top players from across Europe join the Premier League. Because I, I, I think once upon a time, I think we had the real monopoly on all the best players in the world. I don't think we do anymore. But by the way, I don't think there are many top players in the world. But you know what I mean? So I would... Um, I would love to see Musiala play in the Premier League. Um, I'd love to see him at Spurs, but it's not the sort of signing Spurs make. Um, but yeah, I'd, 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 I'd like to see him. He's a very good talent from whenever I've seen him play. Look, I, I mean, he's. I, I've seen him maybe play 15 to 20 times internationally and, and of course, for, for Bayern. And every time I watch him, even when he doesn't have his best game, he's still really good. If you get right, he's still dangerous. He's still breaking mm. lines. He's still moving that needle. I think... This year has been better. I think I would like to see more output from him, but he's still only, what, 20 to 21 years of age. He's still a baby for all intents and purposes. And for someone so young, I was looking at this statistic earlier, someone so young that have already played like 177 games in his career, 144 of them for the first team of Bayern Munich is astronomical. And look, Bayern are a huge team. Bayern are a massive club, but his deal runs out in two years. And I think... It is, of course, Man City. Because I look at Man City and think to myself, they need that KDB replacement. That attacking midfielder for the future. Now, I don't, right now, I, I, I don't know if there, are, there is anybody that's going to be of KDB's level of, uh, of, of passing and the way he's able to move. He's one of their greatest ever players, one of the Prem's greatest ever players. But I look at someone like Musiala and think, that could be absolutely, it's a different type of player. And sometimes that's easier when you're a different player, when you're the replacement of a great. Because if you're a similar style, you're hugely compared. If you're a little bit different stylistically, on we 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 had that when we brought in Michael Carrick for Roy Keane. Now I'm not comparing the two players. I'm just saying Michael Carrick was such a contrast stylistically to Roy Keane. I think it helped him bed in. If we'd have brought someone in who had a shaved head and was a bit of a good on the ball, but a bit more physical and a bit more about that element of the game, it would have been well. He isn't as good at doing that as Roy Keane, so I don't like him where mm -hmm. Michael Carrick was very, very different. So I look at this and just think it has, it, it, it's just, it, look, he's, he's, in my opinion, look, Phil Foden's brilliant, but I think Musiala is better. I, I really do. I think oh, Jude Bellingham's not, brilliant. Not, not for me. I'll, I'll disagree with you on Bellingham, that one. Do you, do you not think he's better than Phil Foden? I, uh, listen, I, when I've watched Musiala, I think Musiala looks, looks absolutely brilliant when he's on it. When I watch Phil Foden, just te technically, tactically, his versatility. Phil Foden's an absolute gem. If England should be building that team around Phil Foden and Jude Bellingham, right? I think he's a, I think he's a superb footballer and one of the best players I've seen in the Premier League at receiving the ball in those tight areas and driving forward with it. I, I think he, he, his, he receives it with his back to goal, but he's turning as he receives it. He knows what's around him. He drops into those little pockets of space. I think he's a phenomenal footballer, Phil Foden. Um, so, so, and he so could he, go on to be the most sorry. decorated player of Premier League history. He could. Phil Foden, and there's nothing you've just said about Phil Foden I disagree with. His ability on that half turn is ridiculous. Yeah, He could go on to be the most decorated player. He's still never been the star of Man City, which he's I think... He's not going to be, is he? he he's but, not going to be while De Bruyne is there, right? Well, but this but this is this is the, the, the debate comes in. I look at it this way. I, I think everything you've said about Phil Foden is right. But I think Musiala is better than him. That doesn't mean, though, they can't fit in the same team because Musiala oh, sure, generally, sure, sure. generally plays more centrally. I still think you get the best out of um, Foden when he's played in a slightly wider 
position. I still can't understand anybody that thinks that Jack Grealish is better than Phil Foden. It absolutely confuses me. Again, Jack Grealish is really good, but Phil Foden can do everything pretty much that Jack Grealish can, but he scores and assists more. So I don't understand how you can say someone's better just because of that. I mean, the only thing Jack Grealish is better than him at is he's better looking. That's it. He's, he's a better looking <laughs> geezer. And that's it. But he's I just better looking. Think if, if KDB is leaving, Man City should be all over it. Equally, if Arsenal are moving into this next echelon of their, of their cycle as a football club, Arsenal have got to look at him as well. Arsenal have got to try and sign someone like this. And I don't care how good they think Odegaard is. Odegaard's good. This is where you know if your fans are ready for to be a, Yeah, exactly. This is where you know whether your fans are ready for your club to be a giant club, where you go, I love you, Martin Odegaards, but Musiala every day of the week mm. because he's better. At 20 years of age, he is better and he's going to go on to be another level. And that's the one thing with City fans. City fans will just say, yeah, great. Give us another top quality player. Give us another top quality player and we'll make it work. Where I feel... With Arsenal and there are other clubs, Man United are a bit like this. It's yeah, but 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 I love Odegaard or, or I love Bruno. I don't care. What's yeah, better? Yeah. And he's yeah. twenty. In another two or three years' time, you know how good this kid's gonna be? They Do should be all over this. They should be absolutely all over it. I I'll ask the question: At what age did Kevin? Hang on, I'm gonna have a look. What age did Kevin De Bruyne join Man City? How old was Kevin De Bruyne? I'm gonna say mm -hmm. twenty-four. Right, Maybe okay. 25, 24, 25 is what my Let's guess would be. He joined Man City in 2015, which was nine years ago. He's 32. So he would have joined Man City when he 23. was 23, 24, which is the age Phil Foden is now. Mm -hmm. I'm just watching Phil Foden every year, just coming into his own more and more and more. Look, I think that the difficulty is as well, when, you, when you're at a club like City, to stand out as the main attacking threat is difficult because you've got De Bruyne and Haaland, right? Which are two of, I mean, it's arguably the two best players in the world in their position. Arguably, you know, I'm, I'm not saying there's no one else could be considered, but arguably. Then you look behind that and you see Rodri is the best player in the world in his position. So it's very difficult for a young player like Phil Foden, I can't believe he's still only 23, to come in and be the main man. But what I would say is this. Phil Foden's been in that first team now for, um, I, I don't know, how long's Phil Foden been playing in that first team? Five years, six years, right? And you think of all, yeah. hang on, I'm looking at it right now. So Phil Foden has played, uh, one sec, Phil Foden, I mean, in his first year, he played five games. So for full seasons, he's had one, two, three, four, five. This is his sixth full season, right? At the age of 23. For him to have overcome all of those players that were in front of him True. or around him at Man City, you think of all the players he's seen off that Peppers let leave this football club. I'm, I'm going to say let leave or, or move on. No, up. Man, I, I agree. I, I just think he, I think he's he still got, he, has, he has got his best years ahead of him still, theoretically. And I say theoretically because some play. Look, Ryan Giggs started at 17 and played till he was 40. Wayne Rooney started at 16, 17, and, he, and, and so did Cesc Fabregas. And by 28, 29, they didn't have the legs to play at the elite end of the game anymore. So you never quite know, but he's still got a number of years left, Foden. And Foden, for me, he could step into that void of KDB when KDB goes. And as you say, five Premier Leagues already, two FA Cups, umpteen League Cups, Champions League winner, treble winner, world champion. This guy, if he keeps winning and City keep winning, this guy could actually surpass Ryan Giggs' yeah. trophy hall, yeah. which is crazy. He, he absolutely could. Do you know how many he's got? Do you know how many, do you know how many trophies he's got at 23? How many? He's got 16 trophies at 23 years wow. of age. Like that's, that's insane. Let's be fair. He's played... And that's in five full seasons of football. This being a sixth. What, what's he going to win this year? Another one? Another two? Another, yeah, exactly. Crazy. And, and, this, and this is why... But this is why City are so great. Because that won't stop City looking at someone like Musiala. Absolutely. They, and this, and this Absolutely. is why they're such an amazing club. Now, look, there's talk whether they've, they've, they've got their free will gotten gains, and that's another conversation. Mm -hmm. But they don't sit there and go, well, we've got Phil Foden, we won't look at Musiala. They go... Can we utilize both? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get can more get of these players. players. Can we get more of these individuals in? Yeah. How can we make this work? You know, they know at some point, and they will probably replace KDB before he's finished. They typically replace somebody before they're done because you don't want to have a year or two of KDB not being good enough, mm -hmm. Rodri not being good enough, Mares not being good enough. You move them on. Look at, I mean, some people think that Sterling's gone now. 
the last two years, you, a lot of it's on Chelsea and how poor they've been. But imagine Sterling doing this at Chelsea and uh, sorry, at City, but City hadn't bought in Doku and they hadn't bought in uh, Jack Grealish. They were still persevering with, with Sterling and he was doing this. They wouldn't do that. They never allow it to happen. So th- th- this is why, again, I, have you noticed down the years, there's very few players that Pep Guardiola doesn't mind shifting on. Yeah, there's very few players. Players that other clubs would have as their best player, Pep doesn't mind shifting them on. There's very few. Like Carl Walker didn't want him to go in the summer. Fought two for nail because he understands what he brings. Yeah, he understands what he mm-hmm. needs. Um, Gundogan, for years, for years, Gundogan and Silva, he's fought to keep them. Obviously, Gundogan, in the end, the contract ran out and he went. But Bernardo Silva talks with him again. Yeah, I'll stay for another year. I'll stay for another two years. Look, for me, you're spot on, Terry, with this. You're spot on. There are clubs that go, oh, but if we buy him, who does he play instead of? City don't care about that. He didn't buy Jeremy Doku and go, oh, hang on, we can't buy him because does he play over Grealish? Does he play over Foden? Does he play over Silver? They bring them in and rotate them. And look, at the end of the day, you've got top, top, top footballers all over the park, all over the bench. The moment you've got that, you've got more chance of winning anything. And you're right, the likes of Liverpool, uh, so the likes of Arsenal, right? The likes of even Spurs. One thing I always had about us under Poch, we had a great 11, but the moment you talked about buying a, buying another quality player, people would go, oh, oh, but who's he going to replace? And no, no, that's not the mindset. The mindset isn't who's he going to replace? Who's he going to compete with? Who are you competing with? So yep. I, I, I just listen, I think, by the way, if you offered me Musiala or phone, I, I, I'm not going to be upset with whichever one I get left with, by the way. Um, I think they're both brilliant, brilliant players. Um, but Foden, I mean, when you look at how many games he's already played at the age of 23, he's won everything in football other than internationally. I mean, he's a class act. I thought against Newcastle, I'd only watched the game. I thought he was sublime. I thought he was he was just different. You look at him and look at Odegaard. The difference in these two as footballers is just ridiculous. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it, it, he's absolutely out of this world, and the standards are there. And you know, a fan base isn't ready to win when you hear things like oh, we can't sign Musiala because it will stop the progression of whoever. Yeah, you know, Musiala yeah, yeah. is better, so sign him. It's it's crazy, but it comes back down to that's what makes Pep Guardiola great. Is he manages to bring for, look look how he keeps young players happy. Look how he integrates Rico Lewis, Oscar Bob. Right, look how he's integrating these players. Is it um, who's the other one? They've got the um, uh, another young player who came on and made his debut in Europe, Champions League, and scored a winner. Is it Mika something? Maybe anyway. Yes, yeah, I'm not um, sure his name, but I know what you mean. And, and 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 you look at this and you think all of this whilst they've got all of these senior pros above them, and he manages to rotate. How many players are unhappy at City when they're rotated? None. Well, again, they're winning, so it helps as an example. I remember, yeah, of course. yeah, yeah. That, that, but, but as you say, he gets it absolutely right. They get their chance, they get their opportunity, and then when they get to a Cole Palmer point, it's either like, well, you either stay and, and, and be happy here, or we'll let you go. And they do let people go see when the players don't want to be there. And I think that's another way of keeping people happy because they Cancelo. know <laughs> they know that if yeah, I mean, he, he Sane is a great example. The players know that if I'm not happy, they'll let me go. But I've got to obviously have the right attitude and behave in the correct way. They get it absolutely right there so much um, of the time. I want-